Good morning, everybody, and to the people uh, on live stream. Um, my name is uh, Xiaojun Wang. Uh, I started my data career in a small uh, internet company uh, called CNET. Um, back then, the, uh, we processed daily about uh, 400, 500 million uh, web log without knowing it's called, actually called uh, big data. Um, and also, back then, we didn't know that, I didn't know that, that you can, the term sexy can be very close to the word scientist. So I feel lucky from that perspective. And I think you guys are, we're all pretty lucky are in this space. Um, now I work for ADP um, building data product. Um, and you might ask uh, why, and I'm going to show you. So over past our, uh, past yesterday, you hear people talk about uh, algorithm, and um, a lot of people talk about the models. Um, today, I'm going to take uh, my talk is going to take a li little bit different angle. Um, so I, I I'm going to talk about uh, dataware, if I can, may borrow the term from Sri. Um, the algorithm um, are built, H2O smart engineer has built a lot of great algorithm, built driverless AI, and I feel that part of the equation has been, we have great partners of H2O take care of that. Another aspect are so important is data, because eventually data fuels the algorithm to, event to produce the, the outcome. Um, so today I want to focus on from that perspective and show you how we actually formulate uh, machine learning questions and how we uh, derive, get product ideas and how we actually execute and, uh, um, and create value out of data. So, not many p people here, but I want to see how many of you actually heard of ADP before. Great. And uh, how many of you actually uh, work for a company use ADP currently? Cool. Um, so, actually, you guys know more than me. And before I joined ADP, I thought, oh, it's just uh, payroll. It's boring. Um, but, but. We, once I dive in, you, you actually find there's a lot of going on. If you uh, look at this, ADP have more than 600,000 uh, clients all, all, all over the world. And each year, we, we actually serve 35 uh, uh, million active users. Um, and we move trillions of dollars um, and out of the, that, that uh, ADP actually already exists in six, uh, 68 years. If you think about that, uh, you know, in today's world, it's sort of, sort of like ancient uh, animal. But we are still growing uh, steadily, move up the rank in Fortune 500. Um, so, so. If we look, uh, dive deeper into the data, what it means, it, there are, under our portfolio, there are 35 million users, 600,000 clients over 10 years. So I'm repeating this number because I want you to look at this and sort of uh, get a sense of skill in this. What that means, because if you, we estimate uh, workforce in, in US is uh, 150 million, it is roughly one out of six. Um, our, our employee are covered in our portfolio. And um, uh, we have roughly close to 20% of organizations in, in US. We all, we have some data about them. And again, it lasts more than 10 years. 
So if we go a little bit more deeper to see what our HCM covers, now I want you to stare at this picture and trying to imagine what, what really we can do with all this data. And, and also keep, keep in mind that we have 35 million and we have 10 years and we have 600 clients. So I look at this, I, I don't know if you get the same feeling as mine, like this is scary because out of this, if we thinking each employee is um, a unit of economy and we can actually get, we are the one who can, who can uh, capture the biggest signal of both high level economic uh, signals, but also we can capture the dynamics of the most ground level uh, activities in all the uh, individual and in organizations. And, and uh, with that, and I don't know if you guys know, there's um, uh, ADP has a national employment report. Um, and then we also have continue to produce uh, uh, workforce vitality report. And um, from there, we can do a lot more. So the way, the way we think about this is that we can organize the data in two, uh, I, we should uh, look at data from two um, perspectives. One is employee centric. So what does that mean is that we, we look at data from uh, individual employee perspective. What we do, we start with uh, benchmarking and naturally it is, um, uh, it's something just naturally comes to it, right? Because uh, if you think about it right now, a lot of the uh, uh, benchmark are pr produced by survey, major majority of benchmark is survey. And we have sufficient um, data to produce the most convincing benchmarks in all aspects of uh, uh, employee um, compensation benefit and uh, other aspects such as like time, overtime, um, bonus, or that. And from there, because we create the benchmark, we sort of uh, have a wide spectrum of view of uh, of what's good, what's bad, you know, and then we can evaluate uh, fly risk, uh, turnover probability. We can look at, you know, what kind of empl employee are considered quality of hire. We can say, you know, what sort of uh, skills really have a positive impact on employee performance. And we can also uh, demonstrate from the data that how a, a employee can grow over uh, their career. And then further, next step, where we can come from all the behavior data, we, we're able, able to create some virtual assistant to help um, employee do their work, to, to help them to manage their benefit, man, manage their retirement uh, package, and also manage their career. So here is actually a product we delivered, award-winning product in the last uh, year. Um, this is a specific uh, uh, compensation benchmark. If you look at, I wonder you look at the top, is we have the ability to uh, create benchmark based on the industry, which the industry you are, based on um, how large um, your, uh, the company you work for, whether it's a small company, it's a large company, uh, you can measure it by, by revenue size, you can measure it by headcount. Um, and um, what kind of, um, also we can measure by type of roles, type of jobs, um, and the type of, uh, type of uh, location, you know, which, which, which area you're from. 
if we zoom in a little bit, you know, you can see we benchmark based on the base salary. We can benchmark on your total compensation, include your uh, bonus, include your overtime, and uh, we can also certainly show you the um, the uh, overall view of how many employee gets bonus, how many gets uh, overtime. And you, you also get a sense what are the sample size. And this is an example how we implemented the uh, turnover probability. And I, I remember yesterday there's a session, uh, um, uh, business science talking about um, turnover, turnover probability and there are people asking for uh, what are the features and here actually we, I can show uh, some of those are used in our uh, turn pro turnover probability calculation but we actually include a lot more features than, than what's listed here. So now move to uh, uh, our value actually does not limit in employee level data. We can actually do um, company level. So it, it, I, I think a lot of people are going to ask, you know, what's the difference? And if you think about it, a uh, company pays a lot more than the, the salary. There are, uh, they have to pay a tax. There are benefit. So we can actually uh, uh, produce benchmark from company's perspective, including the, uh, include those factors. And furthermore, because we, we have 600,000 clients, over time, we, we can capture, uh, extract an uh, abstraction called business function. Why? Because we actually know your job titles. So we can see which area you're working on. We have um, uh, reporting st uh, structure, we have organization information. So we can actually tell um, for each company, uh, what are you, how are you allocating your resource? How are you ca uh, allocating your uh, both uh, resource in terms headcount, also resource in terms of uh, pay, payroll? And how you are growing or cutting your uh, workforce, how you're distributing your workforce in, uh, in, in different area. And um, another thing is that from company's perspective, every company wants to grow. And we, because we actually have a wide range of um, client profile, we have small business, we have medium-sized company, which is our biggest uh, volume. And then we have large national um, uh, clients. We can actually monitor th them through time to say how are they growing or how are they declining. And during this process, what are, how are the um, uh, things, certain factors change, their headcount change, how their resource allocation changed, and what might be the uh, factors that correlated with their progress over time. And, and, and what we believe are the factors that, that's uh, correlated with your with growth. To do that, we certainly need to include um, external data. So here is an example of business functions. We, we are able to show companies that how um, are you allocating both headcount and payroll dollars among those uh, major um, business functions. And we derive those from your uh, reporting hierarchy and um, job and a lot more. Uh, and as, this is um, what I talk about how we, um, based on the company level data, to actually create, starting with a diagnostic table, because we have a wide range of companies, um, uh, features, and we derive them and uh, capture in this table. Um, and then we can use machine learning uh, approach, link with external data, their financial data, be able to 
to say, oh, those are the factor linked with your uh, growth and the financial performance. And with that, we're able to identify the growth factor. And, and we, if we, well, majority of the company, as all we all know, doesn't grow, so we, we can associate, we can produce index and vitality score to demonstrate we believe your, your uh, health status of a company. So I, I think by now I'm convinced. I'm convinced you that really you know we can do a whole lot with this data. Um, so where do we start? Obviously, you know we we need to uh, go through to um, make sure that client trusts us. You know we we get their permission to use their data. Um, we make sure that we don't violate their trust. Um, we anonymize everything. Um, and we set up security zones to make sure that there's most detail level data and sensitive data, PII, CII, are not coming down to the, to the, uh, to the area that um, majority of the, the uh, people can see. Instead, we, we have development area where we do development with anonymized data and then for the sensitive data, we actually do development and, and uh, let the code run. Uh, in a different zoom. And then we make sure that all the model we produce, all the metrics that we produce are, are aggregated, highly aggregated, so there's no individual company's data would, um, can be derived or, or guessed in any way um, from those, the data set we publish. And, and, and in fact, all our models are, uh, need to be reviewed by legal, which is a very interesting process. So what sort of a, uh, the challenge we, we see? Now, when you see those, ah, you, you're like, you know, every, probably every machine learning uh, prob uh, problem will have this kind of uh, challenge. Um, that's very true. But um, we are actually dealing with a little bit differently, I, I think, with the majority of the case. For example, for incomplete, I, uh, first, just to give you a sense how incomplete uh, it is. Um, you see, there's a, some very important information, like reporting hierarchy. There's, there's 15, more than half is, is all missing. Um, so, What we, if you look at the features, what we're dealing with is very different from, uh, it's not numeric. So a lot of times people say, oh, we just, uh, the way we impute missing value is uh, average or, or no, or some, some statistic method. It's really not uh, enough. In, we actually take pen to, uh, to use, different data source to first do the enrichment. Second is to use machine learning approach to actually filling up uh, using um, proxy from other column, from other data to fill up the incompleteness of the data. And um, this is a inconsistency which is a huge headache. We will have multiple column data and um, they, they don't agree with each other. One column is tell you this, other column is tell you no, it's not. And uh, only 44% of our data is actually consistent. So what do we do? Um, so what we, found, what, what we found is we need to build a latent multi-stage learning, um, let, create latent feature. So we were let, we're saying essentially, it's saying that you know, the dominant signals wins, right? Um, if, even though there's inconsistency, but there will be signals indicating certain things, um, more than one signal indicated that, then we would take that as a, as a winner. And so, and dissociated data is even more, because uh, our data pull from different 
different resource, and then, you know, really you will have a key that can link every data together. Um, we, we, we basically need to link semantically in all levels. So, this slide is actually already dated well, well, now. Um, those are some of the cases where we use, we use um, really use machine learning, use H2O, help us to uh, figure out um, job, job and job level, because as you know, uh, ADPs grow over acquisition and uh, data from all different application and client enter data differently across uh, a wide spectrum and we, we need to first normalize, right? We normalize how people set up variable pays, bonus. We normalize the, the, the different, uh, different company call the same thing differently. And then in other things, validation, all the data product we pro provide, it's, it's, it's very different from um, uh, a lot of, lot of cases here. People describe how you validate a model is you can just say, yeah, error rate is 98% uh, or 80%. Oh, that's a great model for us. That's just the beginning. You really have to apply that to um, all the cases, apply that to actually um, uh, in multiple scenario and, and make sure in all scenario it, it, it uh, produce meaningful result. Uh, one of that obviously is benchmark and, um, and all vitality score, all that, all different aspects. And we, we already, the first two columns are, are, are already majorities in uh, product. Now we're moving to the, working on the third one is to, uh, to further to recommend, to do recommendation. Um, what that means is that we, we, we have recruitment data, we have uh, people's resume, we have job posting, um, how we can match those um, more than just based on some keyword. Um, and then how we can, because we, we have information how people move through organization, how we can um, reduce turnover by showing them there, are, there is a path how you can move within your company. And then further is um, we, have, we have visibility into small company, in big company, and company in different stage of their growth. We can actually recommend practice um, business practice to those companies in such as a payroll setup, um, benefits set up automatically. Now, we, we successfully build those, those products and uh, one problem we're facing is that um, your boss will come to you, yeah, oh, can you do more and faster? So this is what we're working on. We realize that uh, only one team doing um, data science is, is really not uh, enough. How we can actually accelerate this innovation pace and, uh, and uh, push it to every aspect of the company and push to all the business units and, and without recreate the whole different pieces. So what we're saying is that we, we want to build a um, platform. Now, I know this is a buzzword right now. Uh, everybody use that. But I think here is, is what it means to us is really is you have, you have something that uh, you want to make it reusable everywhere. What we do is uh, we start with uh, uh, leveraging Cloudera platform and um, uh, all those ecosystem built on, on top uh, leverage H2O, which is essentially the engine of, of uh, machine learning platform. Um, we from that, we create one master reference data that encapsulate all the key uh, data assets uh, in human capital management domain, um, incorporate with increasingly large benchmarks. 
We're expanding benchmark not only to compensation, benefit, but also to uh, recruitment um, and expanding to a client level benchmark. And in addition, all the models we build, we actually make it uh, uh, reusable through API. Um, one, if any one product create one model that can be pushed uh, through multiple product. And all that we serve through API and uh, for example, for benchmark, not only uh, all the application within ADP can access that uh, external client. Any, any of you are interested in saying we want to purchase certain part of a um, benchmark, you, you don't, there's a, not a complicated, we can just, you can call API and uh, we make that available to you. So I just want to show here quickly, this is a golden ratio that we, we use, you know, because um, actually we sp spend majority of our, our time still in the data analysis, in uh, messing with the data, trying to figure out, um, and then scale it, you know, automate it. Um, our modeling process is actually uh, highly concentrated and very, very effective, especially with H2O uh, tool, where it's capable, we're capable of uh, produce uh, models very, very quickly. Usually, um, we spend one month to, to create initial model and then um, iterate through that, uh, and uh, we can go production, usually between three to six months. Finally, um, basically this is a, the core lessons we learned from this whole um, journey is that um, we find it, you, we need to put, you really need to put all the data together in one place, um, especially with company like, uh, like ADP, which is, uh, it's not uh, evenly developed, it's not like small company, so a lot of a variety of, uh, uh, data practice, it's, it's a lot faster, you just pull data from different corner into one place. And then, um, and, and then leverage H2O as, a, as the most efficient um, product across corporate, everybody should use that. And then for all, all, the, all the models, all the data, you know, you really create it once, then you can use it everywhere. Thank you.